Hey everybody, one of the GMG Review. Today we're taking a look at Warcry Crypt of Blood, a new two-player learn-to-play starter set, a whole new genre of starter set for Warhammer Age of Sigmar Warcry from Games Workshop. So um, I'm excited about this for a bunch of reasons. Now this was uh, sent to me as a complimentary review copy uh, in advance, and what we're going to do today is we're going to look at this as like a format change. Um, and what comes in this box. So what you get is you get a start here rulebook, a 72 page Warcry rulebook uh, that includes a, the core rules of the game and then a ton of scenarios to teach you the ropes. You get a double sided battlefield mat, so it is the full size Warcry mat, but in paper instead of card. Eight fighters with their ability cards for their warbands, um, 18 dice and a range ruler. So always my number one complaint with Star Sets against your shop I don't know why these two-player battle boxes don't come with dice and rulers. Just, just put them in, just every time. But it does come with that. Um, and then you get some terrain as well, which is exciting. You get uh, the Soul Blight sarcophagus, a Soul Blight statue, two ruined fences, and two ruined walls. So this is really interesting. Um, obviously, one of the things that's being done here is they are reusing Xandar's Truth Seekers in the Crimson Court, which were previously Warcry miniatures. Not Warcry, uh, Warhammer Underworlds miniatures. Warcry miniatures. This is Warcry. <laughs> um, everything has war in the name. <laughs> so Warhammer Underworlds miniatures. Um, and arguably some of the nicest of that season, Harrow Deep. I believe Xandar's Truth Seekers were the Harrow Deep um, sort of like uh, poster children. They, they were the Stormcast that were in the, the main two-player box set. And the Crimson Court was a fan favorite because it's four really cool Soulblight Vampire miniatures. Uh, you get a, a set of stat cards for them in their character form, which I believe are Runemark compatible with the Runemarks for the Stormcast and the uh, Soulblights, which means that you can use them in your regular warbands. So let's crack this open. Now, this is a 12 by 8 by 10. I had my ruler here somewhere. What did I do with it? No, no, I've lost my... Oh, no, here it is. I was under my keys. <laughs> it is a... Yeah, it's a 9 by 12. That's 12, yeah, box set. So it's bookshelf format, which is typically like the... Um, you can put this in a game store, and it has, this is weirdly important to me, it has bookshelf packaging, which means you can stock this really easily, and it feels like this might be the kind of thing that goes in the main range. Now, obviously, I don't have any insider info on this, but it's a compact starter set. You could stock in toy stores, you could stock in bookstores, and you could keep in rotation a little bit more easily um, by having it be lower cost uh, and in distribution to like retailers to continue recruiting Warcry, because what tends to come and go with Warcry and Kill Team in particular, and I'm really hoping they do a Kill Team version of this, is that this game will have a big two-player battle box come out, it'll have the rule book in it, it'll launch in summertime, that book will be, or that box will become scarce, uh, and then the two-player battle boxes all presuppose you have the core rules, uh, and they come out over the course of the year. I would much rather see a bite-sized box like this that stays in rotation as like the main supporting like feature of the game with a lower cost entry. And the reason for that is I like Warcry. It is a great arena battler. They did a ton to punch it up in this most recent edition. Um, and the, uh, the core mechanics of the game are really solid as like an alternating activation game from Games Workshop. So let's crack it open. I already pulled the rulebook out and actually see what's in here. So this is the Crypto Bud rulebook. We'll go through this in a second as is a GMG review tradition. But here's the remaining cardstock stuff. And then here is the new frame. I believe this is a new frame because I don't think I've seen this before with the walls, the graveyard, and the statue in it. So you get this much terrain. And then you actually get the colored, um, you get, I believe, new dice. I don't I don't think I've seen these GW format dice before. I was actually I was weirdly excited about this. I don't know why, I don't know, <laughs> I don't know why like knowing the production eras of stuff, maybe it's too much inside baseball, but like when they do something like this, like uh, I, I, it makes me really happy. These are about the same size as like Monopoly dice, like board game dice from Hasbro. Uh, and, and I really like them. They're a little bit bigger than the current dice, but they have like a nice like feel to them. Uh, and you get, a good, you get a good amount in this box. Um, I still wish they would bring back either the red or the blue dice that came in the uh, Dark Imperium and the Warcry box set because the, the Soul, Bl Soul Wars? I think it was Soul Wars box had the blue ones. I love those dice, but these are really nice and I'm excited to start a new Games Workshop dice collection <laughs> for some reason. Uh, you get the uh, Hero Deep starter models, which is of course the Stormcast here in blue plastic, all push fit if you want to just put them together quickly. And then these right here are the Soul Blight Gravelords in the red plastic, also all push fit. 
Uh, doesn't make a piece of terrain. I thought that would be clever if they did the Necromunda thing where this was like a platform so you could put it on a piece of terrain, but does not. Uh, also, these are push fit too, the terrain pieces, which I think was an interesting choice in that you can quickly get these guys put together. Um, anything that isn't push fit is like hollow. So you can see the back of the vampire here doesn't need a back plate because it's full of skulls. Um, just full of candles on the statue and stuff. I'm actually relatively pumped about these. Uh, and then we get the remaining cardstock assets. Uh, so you get, and, and it's funny because it didn't say this on the back. So you get your uh, Xandar's Truth Seekers and rah, uh, and the Crimson Court um, like uh, reaction cards. So reaction for the Crimson Court if you're using them as a Crimson Court, because I believe they have the main. I believe that they have the main rune mark, and then they have the faction rune mark too. Yeah, they have the Stormcast rune mark, and then they have. Yeah, so they do have the Soul Blights one. This one was really me because it's the Thunder Strike uh, one. So anybody, any Thunder Strike Warband can use these, and then any um, Soul Blights Warband can use these. And you don't quite get the thousand points. You get um, in the Soul Blights, you get three forty four forty five five forty five five sixty five, and then for the Stormcast, you get two ten three seventy five four seventy five five forty five. 475, 655 in points value. Um, but you can also use them as themselves. You can use the Truth Seekers if you just include them and the Crimson Court as well. They get Unfeeling Flesh. A fighter can make this reaction if targeted by a melee attack action before the hit rolls are made. Subtract one damage point uh, to points allocated to this fighter for each hit by an attack action, a minimum of one. And then Thunder's Departure, which is just the Thunder Strike one where you, uh, you when you target by a melee attack action, after the damage is total, but before it's allocated to the bear, if it takes them down, allocate d6 damage points to the attacker because they blow up. And then they get uh, their own like bespoke double for the Lantern Astrala, uh, which is until the end of the battle round, subtract two from the value of the abilities used by visible enemy fighters while they're within nine of this fighter, which is cool. So you can you can reduce their like their impact damage and stuff. Like it's really good against monsters. Uh, double is Staggering Blow, uh, which is for the double-handed weapon guy. Basically, each of the characters has their own little like ability. Uh, where is he? Hammerman? Yeah, Hammerman gets that, which is uh, pick a visible enemy fighter within one inch, and they take uh, this fighter makes a that enemy fighter makes a bonus disengage action, and if they can't do so, allocate D6 damage points to that enemy fighter instead. Um, and then double darting attack. This fighter makes a bonus action, uh, sorry, attack action. And then they can make a bonus disengage action. That's for the bird. Uh, for the shooter, uh, it's the Guided Lightning. A fighter can only use his ability after it's made a missile attack action until the end of the round. I don't want his attack characteristic uh, attack actions that target the, um, the the target. So like you basically make him easier to hit. And then triple is a coordinated strike, and that's available to the leader. Uh, the pick of the number of visible enemy fighters equal to half the value of this ability within nine of the fighter. So if you want to do everybody, it's going to be like a six to or five or six. Uh, with a nine. Those fighters can each make a bonus move action, bonus attack action. Some can make a bonus, you can mix it up. And then quick volley for a triple as well. Add two to the attack characters because the next activation um, if they have no fighters within three. So basically for a triple you can get two extra shots on your wicked good gun. Your three to 15, two attack, strength four, two four damage guns. So you can go to uh, you can go to four attacks at strength four, two four damage, which is crazy. So yeah, so solid like stats for them. Crimson Court. Um, they get their core ability, which is the Thrill of the Hunt, uh, due to the attack and strength characteristic of the next stack action made by this fighter. Uh, the target's an enemy fighter with any damage points, so basically if you're already wounded, they get better at hunting you. Uh, double is Fiendish Lure. Until the end of the battle round, add one of the damage points allocated to enemy fighters uh, for each critical hit that the attack action made by friendly fighters. Uh, the target enemy fighter within six. So basically, like, you make, your, you make yourself um, better at fighting uh, and drawing in your guys. And who is that? That's available to, it looks like the boss does Fiendish Lure. Because he's so charming, he just suckers you in. Uh, then he can also do Summon Undead Minions. Pick a friendly fighter with a minion rune mark that has been taken down. And, and they, I think these guys are all minions. Uh, actually, none of these guys are minions. So it wouldn't actually be relevant, I don't think, in this core box. But they have it for later, which is cool. I uh, pick a friendly minion rune mark that's been taken down, set that fighter up on a platform on the battlefield or the battlefield floor, wholly within three of this fighter. And they no longer cast being taken down, has no damage. And then everybody gets thirst for blood. They sure do because they're all vampires. Uh, fighter can use this ability if an enemy fighter has been taken down by attack action made by this fighter this activation. 
Remove a number of damage points equal to double the value of this ability. So basically you can drink the blood of your enemies. And then finally the boss, uh, I believe, gets this one? Yes. Call the Crimson Feast until the end of the battle round at one of the attack characteristics of melee attack actions made by friendly visible players within six. Everybody gets jacked up. So a uh, cool melee force, a bit more of a like mixed force with a bit of shooting, a monster, like not a monster, but like a minion or a thrall. Uh, and yeah, uh, the other thing that wasn't really marked in the back, but you get counters. You get a full set of activation counters, damage counters, and your little six inch range ruler, which is super cute. It's not in plastic. It's got like a wooden ruler. I, I really like that. That's a perfect size ruler. You don't need the 12 inch range one. This is the perfect size ruler for measuring around stuff. Objective markers, damage markers, um, you get your uh, dagger, shield, and hammer, uh, and then your weight and then activated markers, and your reaction markers for doing like a single action too. So all the potential markers you could want, and then this fold-out board, uh, which I believe is double-sided. Yeah, it sure is. So it's, I believe it's a reprint of the classic um, first edition Warcry mat, but it's a full-size paper Warcry mat. Uh, along with this like sort of deserty theme one. It is a teeny bit glossy, which is gonna bother me, <laughs> mostly just because it's gonna show my camera, probably wouldn't bother most people, um, and is ready to play out of the box. So last but not least, of course, get your guide for instructions. Because they're all push fit, uh, what's great about these is they tend to go like almost numerically. So if you just clip off uh, pieces uh, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, it's this one. Uh, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20 is this one. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, right? And then 21, 22, 23, 24. So I, I do love that. Uh, sorry, 7 because of the base. The, the, the nice thing about reusing the Underworlds miniatures is that everything is done in like a numerical format to make them as easy to build as possible. So I'm not even going to probably need to look at this to put this stuff together. Same with these. The train pieces are 1, 2, 3, 4, then 5, 6, 7, 8, and then just clip us out because we're one piece miniatures which is great. Uh, so that's that's the contents of the box. Let's have a look. I'm going to put all this stuff back in the box lid because it's conveniently one of those uh, at the book and how the book is laid out. Because the book is maybe the most interesting part of this box set uh, in how it is formatted. Right there. And so let's do this part of the room. All right, the book. Crypt of Blood. Um, so, again, full color introduction to Warhammer Age of Sigmar Warcry. Um, has a back section with like what would you add after this, uh, what's available to your faction, and what does things look like. Uh, and then the bulk of it is to battle. Seven individual battle plans that allow you to play through a narrative which will teach you the core rules of the game. So, again, I don't know what the cost of this box set is. I'm guessing around or s like just from based on box size this is a complete guess because i don't get to know what these things cost when they when they show up to review which is a, again I, I wish i did <laughs> but i'm gonna guess it's around the cost of an underworld's box because it contains roughly the same amount of stuff right um even a little less component wise because it doesn't have a cardboard board uh, but you're gonna get to learn to play basically by going through these uh and and getting your stuff together so uh, welcome to Warcry. What is the Age of Sigmar? You can enter the Crypt Noctis. What is the setting for this game and where we're going to be playing? Uh, a bit of like discussion about the Stormcast and the Grave Lords. So, like, what is their deal? Who are these two factions you're playing with? Uh, the stories of each of the individual character models, which is nice because they're not just nameless dudes. And and honestly, that's an. I, I mean, I get that it's. I get that the probably the bulk of the intent behind doing this is reuse your assets, right? You have these beautiful Age of Sigmar miniatures that go in and out of rotation through Underworlds. Like, let's get them back in production and and, and make some more money off them. Uh, these characters exist in the world. Why not print them in and put them back in? But I do like the fact that y you care a bit more about the individual characters in a starter set. If you're trying to hook people into a narrative and a story and a setting, make the people like tell me who these people are and why they're fighting. I just feel like it's 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 appropriately or it's more appropriately placed in a starter set because it makes you care more about who you're playing with. And then the box content, so a breakdown of everything that's in here, which we've already done, like your rule book, your range ruler, your battlefield mat, your markers and tokens, your dice, 18 of them. Weird number. I don't know why it's 18. Why is it a 20? Uh, your cards and abilities, the warbands themselves, your construction booklet, and then the terrain that comes in here. And then some building and painting advice. Now this is, so I love dissecting how rule books are formatted and constructed. Um, this is taking a page from my favorite like warband, or not even warband, but like rule book 
layout methodology, which is present the information in the order I am temporally going to interact with it. So show me the stuff that comes in the box. Then show me how would I put these things together? How would I paint them? How do I collect my miniatures? And then have me put down stuff and play a game. And so the battle plans range from the incredibly simple to more complicated. So in this one, Luke's a storm rider is trying to escape. So you're, you're only gonna have uh, a single Thunderstrike uh, Stormcast model, but you're gonna have a couple of, um, of the bad guys trying to chase them down and kill them. So if Luke's gets away, then she wins. If she doesn't, otherwise. And the whole point is we teach you how to move, right? So Aeneas Curseborn is chasing down Lucian, trying to get her away. And so this whole thing is describing how do you move? How do the different keywords associate with moving? No attacks necessary. Just put your models down and, and move them around. Then battle plan number two, Fangs and Fury. Um, you're going to have to learn how an attack works. So it's now that she's escaped, um, uh, if you've just finished the first battle plan, the escape, then the fighters are already deployed in the correct positions. If not, place Luke's uh, Storm Rider on the blue dot and place Aeneas Curseborn on the red dot. Um, next, take the measuring stick, dice, and fighter cards for each players and put them in range of both players. When there's only one fighter left in the battlefield, that, that person wins. So now you're actually going to need to fight each other and learn about how the strength and toughness works. So notice the core rules of the game aren't presented here. They're presented through battle plans. Right, so you learn them as you go through battle plans, um, and that's going to give you the ability to to like pick, get up to speed, and make everything relevant. Now they're printed later on, the actual same format and printing, just with different pictures, as in the core rulebook. Like all those core rules are right there, but they didn't come first. They didn't make you read the rules and try to digest them and then play a game. They they gamify the learning process and give you. Uh, a, 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 it's a have a it's a show instead of a have a go, right? So the, it's in the old format of like tell show have a go. It's tell you what you're doing, then have you do it, right? And, and or to, to tell them what you're doing, show them how it works, which is all the pictography in here and the layouts and stuff like that. And the have a go is do it yourself, right? It tells you all of those things in order. Uh, so we're doing the tell the show and the have a go. Um, before we're doing the, now you read this and try and digest it, because now it's gonna be relevant. Battle plan three, Flurry of Blows. We're gonna learn how to do the counter reaction, and then victory conditions for that. Uh, the next one after that is going to be, and they're almost like battle reports. Um, you set up the train, and then do like an actual like proper deployment. So we're using shield, anvil, and dagger, sorry, shield, uh, hammer, and dagger. And then Spoils of War, how do you introduce objectives? So you can see each one is layering something on, right? It's the deployment of a mission, it's the layering on of objectives. And then finally in battle plan number seven, it's just play a game. We get an actual like twist and deployment and setup here. So once you finish these seven battle plans, you're going to be able to understand this next section, which is the core rules of the game. And it's laid out in that more clinical format of like here's how things work, objectives and treasure tokens. But you've already done the tell the show and the have a go part. And so this stuff is more of a reference afterwards than anything else. And that is great formatting. Like that is, it, it, I would say, it's funny because other rule books have done this before. If you look at the rule books in any of the two player sets for Infinity, if they just put the, like the problem with Infinity is the core rules are so many pages, but all those starter booklets do this section. They do a bunch of battle plans to teach you the core mechanics of the game. And then they have a link to like the core rules. It, this is this is basically one of those infinity booklets to this point, and then afterwards they present you with the actual core rules because Warcry is a game where the, the core mechanics are actually fairly streamlined, and you don't have to have pages and pages and pages of like what you can do and what ifs. Not that kind of game. Uh, and then you're just continuing the quest, so like the core book, the Warcry Compendium, the Warband Tomes, if you want to get those, and then playing through and gathering other mentions for your Warbands. So here's other cool guys you could play with, like the Ascurian Ascurian True Blades, which are some vampire ninjas, or sorry, vampire samurai almost. And then the uh, Quest Wars Wellsworn, which are the Thunderstrike characters. And these are from one of the last box sets. So it ties in nicely. And then it's Monsters, Allies, and Thralls. So like what other little widgets can you buy from the Age of Sigmar range would go with you. And then painting, just like if you want to collect for display and, and do cool stuff. And that's it. So I, I'm really excited about this style of product. One of the things that I think we have right now in Warhammer games in general. Um, and this is concerning to me, not for Games Workshop's sake, but for miniature wargaming's sake in general, is we have a graying population of gamers. Uh, and that is because of the leaky bathtub theory, right? Like, 
the more you make it difficult to enter into and stay a lifelong hobby, like a, like a miniature wargaming hobby, the more there aren't people spreading out and exploring the other aspects of it. And so like it or not, the company with the most money, who does the most marketing, and whose stuff is the most visible to the layperson who doesn't necessarily know what miniature wargaming is, they have a huge ripple effect into the larger community because that's how customers typically discover other companies. Is they come from it's 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 like when you you get into anything that's like an exotic version of the thing you like, or a smaller scale or boutique version of the thing you like. Uh, to use like a another of my hobbies example is you don't start off buying like a pair of Zamberlin mountaineering boots if you get into hiking or backpacking or camping. You go to like Walmart and buy a pair of Columbia or Keen boots because those are the first that they're they're visibly accessible to you and over time if you become into something and you, you keep it as an interest or a hobby you might be more concerned with like your experience and how the products you're buying fit your experience you might buy something very specific you might get a custom-made pair of leather italian made leather mountaineering boots that are gonna last you the rest of your life or you might keep buying disposable you know like like columbia or whatever brand uh boots that are gonna wear out in a couple of years and you're gonna still enjoy the, the hobby that you did as much as you do. So, a pro short story long, a product like this, I think is really important for Games Workshop because they haven't had something like this that holds your hand through the process that stays in rotation for a while. And this box feels small enough and compact enough experientially that you could keep this in production. You're reusing assets. You're not investing a ton of development time into it necessarily. Um, and, and it will teach people to get into a specific niche of your hobby, right? And this is a great low level snack sized Warhammer game that could lead to you exploring first the other aspects of like that larger business. And then maybe for me, which was important, branching off and discovering that there's a whole world of tabletop gaming out there that you can then enjoy and experience and do it your own terms and do it the way that you want. And that's kind of how I approach all my hobbies. So I wanted to give a reference that would show why this is important. I think this having this and having this exist and having this exist for more games, I would absolutely love to see this exist for 40K in a kill team format. Um, I think the new two player star set for 40K is a bit more like this, although it's a heftier investment. Uh, but the rule book in particular here, I think is, is very well crafted to do the thing it's trying to do. Um, and obviously for most of you watching this, this doesn't mean anything, right? Because this isn't a product designed for you. You don't need to learn to play Warcry this way. You could go to Games Workshop's website and download the like PDF of the core rules of this game and understand intrinsically it's a miniature wargaming, here's how we set it up. You could just get by with this section. But the the way that this hobby has another 30, 40 years of like growth, and I don't mean the Games Workshop hobby, I mean like tabletop gaming in general and like a Luddite gaming, is it, it, it needs to have some of the like wisdom that used to get passed on, you know, f by people hanging out in a game club uh, or a game store, which doesn't happen that much anymore. Uh, because of our how online we all are and that we can get our fixes elsewhere. It needs to have it put somewhere else. Uh, and this type of a document, I think, is, is, is going to make it more accessible. This feels more like the 5e e D&D rulebook holding your hand through character creation and not worrying about... You don't even know how the rules of the game work, how making an attack works just yet, because what you need to know is who your character is and who you're imagining yourself going to be, because 80% of your time is going to be spent doing that. That this is the same thought process of writing is how do we lay something out in that tell show have a go format, which is very intrinsic to Games Workshop's culture, um, but very important to people coming into this hobby and 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 hopefully staying and and getting over the hard part of like I don't really know what I'm doing and I don't, this doesn't this feels overwhelming like there's so much here, breaking it into those bite sized sort of like snack sized pieces is really important for that person. So this may not be a product for you watching this because you already know what it is. But I'm going to do a series on this, hopefully. Well, I'm going to do a series on this. That hopefully is useful for people to speak to those people who don't know what miniature wargaming is about this product. We do a thing called Five Days to Play where I, I follow this format and go, hey, we're going to go along with this book and we're going to learn how to become a miniature wargamer and maybe that will have some value. And I hope they do it for more games because I think that this would be a a kind of product that has lots of visibility and lots of accessibility is easier to buy 
um, that will create another generation. And, and hopefully the, the wargaming population isn't as graying in 10 years because lots of people like my kids decide to get into it and they don't find it that hard because they have like some accessible products that they can jump through to, to, to kind of learn that confidence and those skills that you need to become a miniature wargamer. So thank you guys for watching. Um, that's my GMG review of Crypto Blood. Look forward to five days to play, which is going to become an ongoing series, I think, as things are changing here at GMG. Um, for and this was a great kickoff kind of product for. I got a couple other products in mind from different other companies um, that will hopefully, yeah, that will hopefully be good gateways into miniature wargaming. So big thanks for watching. We'll see you for more GMG reviews. Still in a mash. Hey there, I hope you enjoyed that video. There are tons of other games already recorded for you to watch. Click over to my channel page if you haven't already and have a look through the dozens of playlists full of videos. I guarantee you'll discover a game you haven't seen played before. I put out new videos seven days a week and every day is themed to a different genre as I continue to explore the wider world of gaming. Of course, none of that's possible without you, the viewer, so click a like and subscribe if you'd like to stay on top of what's happening here daily. My two kids and I are massively grateful to be able to have the flexibility of this job so I can always maximize my time with them. If you want to support me continuing to put out this content, it's only possible because of my amazing backers on Patreon who support the studio, equipment, and model cost, as well as being how I make the bulk of my living. You can also help out by buying a t-shirt through Spreadshirt, a measuring gauge or widget from Death Ray Designs, or buying one of my games and supplements like Last Days, Gamma Wolves, and Blaster. As a way of showing my appreciation, patrons get early access to new games and supplements that I write throughout the course of the year. Huge thanks for watching, it really does help out, and happy gaming.